Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Finca Larita Wash Process Panama from Pop Coffee Works. And there's the bag right there. And once again, I'll show the back as the small bags also have the astronaut being carried off by the coffee grinder, and I really like that artwork. Pop, based out of Toronto, Ontario, and this is their second time appearing on this channel, having recently reviewed their Chantouine, a wash processed Ethiopian coffee. And in that video, we mentioned a coffee on their websites that definitely caught our interest and prompted us to purchase from them. And it was certainly this coffee, as this is not only a Panamanian coffee, it's a Panamanian Gesha, and a Panamanian Gesha that I have no familiarity with, having never had Larita before. Obviously, we've reviewed a number of Janssens on this channel, and I have pretty extensive history with both Hartman and Esmeralda, but Larita is one I've never tried before, so a new Panamanian Gesha that I don't have any familiarity with, of course I was going to purchase it, and of course I'm excited to discuss it. This right here is day 27 of this coffee. And recipe we settled on for this coffee was our standard recipe. 16 to 1 water to coffee ratio, brewed at 205 degrees Fahrenheit, and I like this one better through the Chemex, which would indicate a more medium grind. And Pop, as mentioned in the previous video, is a very light roasting Canadian coffee roaster, so we call it a Canadian light for the roast profile. Those things out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 13, first impression, and the biggest takeaway I had from this first impression was this is a little bit more vibrant than I typically experience from Panamanian Geshas, especially based off of that first impression, as it was coming out quite tropical fruit forward, and even a little floral vibrant, which kind of bucks the trend and is a little outside of the norm. The citric grainy quality is there, so it does definitely remind me of previous Panamanian Geshas, but it was just a little unique in its own sense. Still left a pretty solid first impression, and it's a coffee that, at the start, caught my interest. Day 15, this time, run through the Chemex, feels a little bit more vintage Panamanian Gesha, which is going to be a positive for me, given that that's what I'm always looking for from them. And in this sense, it is still slightly more vibrant than typically expected or anticipated from these Panamanian Geshas. Could call it a little bit more of the white flower. I think they have a rose note listed on here, and I could kind of see that it's ever so slightly herbal, but for the most part, I think it's just kind of more of that Panamanian Gesha generic floral components to it. That being said, sweeter, sugary, tropical fruit is still quite pronounced, and it's still been pretty nice. Day 18, raise the temperatures back through the V60, and you can feel a fair bit of the acidity, and that's why I didn't necessarily enjoy the higher temperatures on this one, as the trade-off for the really strong acidity was not necessarily worth it for me. It did continue to emphasize the heightened vibrancy of the cup in general, and the listed attribute that they have of a passion fruit seems to make a lot of sense, and I'll be completely honest, I've never had a passion fruit in my entire life. However, as somebody that does collect uh, Japanese Kit Kats, I have had a passion fruit Japanese Kit Kat, and I could see the resemblance. It definitely reminds me of this Kit Kat, and the flavor profiles seem very much in line with each other. So I will go with a passion fruit flavor note without knowing what an actual passion fruit tastes like because of my limited experience. That makes a lot of sense, cools off into quite a floral cup. There's a lot in it. It's got a lot of depth, it's got a lot of complexity. It's a Panamanian Gesha. While it does have a clean base, it still just has a fair bit of just radiating, differentiating factors. Day 20, the coffee really has that Panamanian Gesha it factor on this day, and this is at the more moderate temperatures as it is coming out cleaner, subtly floral, but at the same time, it still does have its own uniqueness in this really strong vibrancy, most notably this kind of sweeter tropical fruit vibrancy that comes from it. Once again, that listed passion fruit note is definitely the key and most distinct aspect to this cup of coffee, given that I've never really had a Panamanian Gesha that kind of skews a little bit more in this direction. Day 22 lowered the temperatures and it didn't quite have the desired results. So I was expecting that maybe it would tone down a little bit of the acidity and maybe even tone down a little bit more of that citrus fruit. And in exchange, I would get a lot more of the florality, but that wasn't necessarily the case as I was just getting a little bit more of the grainy quality that was coming from it. Not necessarily an ideal trade-off, still unusually distinct tropical fruit flavor profile in the cup of coffee in general. So I'd still say positive, but definitely don't like the lower temperatures for this one as much. Day 25, final notes we have. The coffee continues to radiate that Panamanian Gesha it factor, which I always describe as this really clean, grainy, citric component with a bit of white flowers to it. 
and I could definitely feel in this cup of coffee, but rather than just continuing in that direction and making it that sort of fruity pebble flavor that I described that Panamanian Geshe Ed Factor, it does veer off into a lot more of that really sugary, strong, tropical fruit vibrancy. Plenty of other aspects to it. Florality is in very high complement to it as well with a cleaner, sweeter, uh, citrus, tropical fruit base to this cup of coffee. Pretty interesting cup of coffee. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. And I don't have the tasting wheel pulled up. Let me pull it up myself. And there we go. All right. We have one level five and it's a cleanliness. And of course it's the Panamanian Gesha, so it's on there. That being said, it might be on the slightly lower side of that level five, but it's still a very, very clean cup of coffee. So I could see that there. Finish level four. Yeah, that really kind of distinct tropical fruit finish is very strong in this cup of coffee, but I think it's just kind of perfect there at that level four. Sweetness, it's right in the middle of that level four. So I can definitely see that there. Acidity, as mentioned, when you bump the temperatures up, you could probably push that to a higher side of level four, but I think all of these level fours are pretty apt and appropriate for where they should be. Florality at a level four, yes. And then the citrus fruit at a level four, yes. However, this is a Panamanian Gesha tasting wheel. So as you can see, everything else is at a level one because this is a very clear and distinct and directed structured tasting wheel because this is the way this cup of coffee really is. There are these really dominant attributes, but you're not getting any bit of the extras. You're not getting any sort of additional savoriness or, I mean, I guess you could kind of see that, but not really. A slight bit of maybe some savoriness or bitterness. They're really just not present. No chocolate, no caramel, even if there is a slight bit of that brown candy sweetness as well to this cup of coffee. I don't think it's prominent enough to push it all the way up to a level two. So any additional factors are so toned down given just how clean this cup of coffee is and how clean the base is that the only things that are charting anywhere higher than level one are things that you can definitely feel from this cup of coffee because of how clean that base is. As a result, there's not too much to discuss on this tasting wheel. I mean, it looks like a Panamanian Gesha tasting wheel. So yeah, I like the way it looks. I wouldn't disagree with anything on this at all. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. I've said before that I think Pretty much any wash process Panamanian Geisha coffee is going to be better than like 90 plus percent of the coffees out there for me. And this is no exception. I like this coffee for a lot of reasons, very much my flavor profile, but I think the biggest standout factor to me about this coffee was the fact that it is very Panamanian Geisha-like while at the same time having its own unique flavor profile. And that's what I've said about all the Panamanian Geishas. Jansen is very different from Hartman. Hartman and Esmeralda are sometimes a little similar, but they're still very different. Savage, of course, is very different. Like these Panamanian Geishas, while at the heart of things, in theory, should have a lot of similar aspects, they're really not quite. And it's picking up these kind of distinct differences from these coffees that make them so much fun. I really like everything about this cup of coffee, even the flavor profile that typically isn't necessarily something I love as much, this kind of interesting tropical fruit flavor. I like the way it makes itself present in this coffee because of the Panamanian Geshe clear base. So really positive things to say about this coffee. That being said, I don't like it more than the Janssen. I don't like it more than the Esmeralda. So for that reason, it's not gonna be my favorite Panamanian Geshe coffee of the year. However, it still is better than I would say most of the things I have reviewed on this channel, just because it's my kind of coffee. Type of person I would suggest this coffee to, fellow Panamanian Gesha lovers, if you want to try something a little different, I think this will read is fun. Obviously, I've just kind of been discussing the fun, unique profile that comes from it. And I think anybody that appreciates what Panamanian Geshas are would like this one too, especially given that this is on the lighter side of things as well. Just made it a really fun and interesting drink. For the most part, I think I'll leave this review at that. If you've by chance had an opportunity to try this or anything else from Pop Coffee Works, would love to know your thoughts and impressions of it or them as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Finca Larita wash processed Panamanian Gesha from Pop Coffee Works. Thank you for watching.